but I got a very warm reception from some of the old timers who are still around and uh, they still remember you the glory days describes it because it was a glorious time there was nothing like it then and there's been nothing like it since that's what the old timers say about the heyday of senior hockey in Newfoundland from the early 50s to the early 70s the fans packed stadiums in communities right across the province one of those places was Buckins. Until 1985, Buckins was a company town revolving around mining. But in the winter, mining often took a back seat to hockey. Tonight, a look back at an era, an era when one small town lived and died for senior hockey. A weekday afternoon in Buckins. There's no problem getting ice time here. Total enrollment in minor hockey is about 60 kids. 60 kids in a program that used to number about 300. These days, about 1,100 people call Buckins home, a long way from the 3,000 who lived here when this place was a thriving mining community. Huey Wadden remembers the good old days. 60s, 1960, there were 625 employees here. Yeah. So it was a full employment community mm -hmm. right from 1927 on. Buckins was also a hockey town. The team you see here in the dark sweaters won the Herder Trophy five times. It didn't happen by accident. In fact, it's hockey that brought Huey Wadden here from Nova Scotia in 1953. On paper, he came to work in the mine, but he was really brought in for what he could do on the ice. Big number seven was one of provincial senior hockey's first paid players. But he was a, a very aggressive in going into the corners. Boy, but he, he was a terrific hockey player that way. Eric Swanson was the man who brought in the imports. Back then, he was the mine's chief geologist. But when the mine manager decided to build a championship team, Swanson became the middleman, sort of a chief talent scout. Huey was still underage when we contacted him, and he had to get his, his uh, parents' permission to come. I always remember that, that he couldn't on his own. The caliber was terrific. And the coaching, of course, I got in my early days with Frank Bowman was excellent. And this is what really helped me. Because previous to that, I had very little experience in a, in, a, in a way with the top level coach. Huey Wadden joined a team full of stars. The cream of the crop from Kirkland Lake and Cape Breton. Players like number eight, Mort Verbisky, seen here in the dark jersey. Or number 10, Frank Walker. Players that might have made the NHL in the expansion era 15 or 20 years later. There was a smattering of local talent too. Players like Tubby St. George. Oh, it was, it was great. You, uh, you played hockey in the morning. You played hockey in the morning, you went to work in the afternoon. And if you played hockey in the afternoon, you went to work in the morning. But if you had a stiff knee or a bad leg or anything at all, any excuse at all, all you had to do was phone in and say you couldn't get to work and you were still paid. They were all uh, assigned to a, a department in the mine, you know, and they all had time cards, you know, and they were supposed to check in at 8 o'clock. And, uh, of course, they, <laughs> a lot of times they didn't show up, but the manager would sign the card on the way for them, you see. Management turned a blind eye because it was entertainment for a community that didn't have much to do in the wintertime. Until 1960, before the new stadium was built, Buccaneers would crowd into this converted ore shed, 800 strong, watching their club play bitter rivals like Grand Falls and St. John's. Well, if you can imagine a, a, steel, a steel building with people inside and just one continuous roar, bouncing off the steel, so you can imagine this sound that would be there. The team meant so much to Buckins that even today a space in the local museum is set aside just for hockey. What year would, would those of... Uh, Maybe back in the 50s. Say 50s. Yeah. See where you can yeah. them to keep them... Uh, the water, keep them, yeah. the water them? Yeah. yeah. Some of the players still live in the community. And what better place for them to do a little reminiscing? Like when I was growing up, hockey was everything in Buckins, as, as far as sports was concerned. And just to, to put that sweater on was a lot of pride. Well, here is Georgie Pike. He got killed in a plane crash here. This is Herb Pike. That's his brother. This is Al Mullins. This fellow here is Ryan Mullins. And that's myself right here. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing in hockey and uh, in all team sports. You make a 
a lot of friendships there. And I got married here, and I had a girl from here and got married, and yeah. Good life, real good life. Mike Kelly, Jimmy Dahl, Danky Dorrigan, the Faulkner brothers. It was a great experience, I believe you. I never forget to have the opportunity to play with the Bucknell Miners and a local fella from here in town. It was wonderful. Oh, we were treated just like the pros. Yeah. You know. And uh, going on trips, you have whatever you wanted into the hotels, whatever you wanted to eat. You had your steak and eat, you know, but whatever you wanted, the menu was there, you take what you want. That was, you know. So it was first class all the first way. First class all the way. The sticks used to come in 50 dozen or 100 dozen at a time, you know, there was nothing, no problem for equipment. All of us had two pairs of skates. <laughs> there, you know, there was no problem there. I mean, we were treated like pros, you know. And they were followed everywhere by their fans. When the new stadium was built, they'd pack the place. When the club went to places like Grand Falls and Cornerbrook, the fans would go too. And the company would give them some time off during that day and they'd travel down to Grand Falls and train, see the games, come back that night, go to work the next day, leave again at dinner time, go back down again. That's the last year we won. In 1963, yeah. those fans saw the Miners win their fifth championship. Huey Wadden held the herder for what would be the final time. But even after that championship season, the cracks began to show. The miners became easier pickings for rivals like the Cornerbrook Royals. Some of the newer imports weren't playing up to par. The attitude of the players, the, the caliber seemed to drop off, and their attitude they had, you know, towards any kind of work, and, and, and the, it seemed to affect their, their attitude towards playing too. And it, 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 uh, got to the point where the, uh, the general manager he just said enough was enough. That happened in 1970. The year before, the Gander Flyers had beaten the Miners right in Buckins to win the Herder. It was the end of the Miners. This is the only hockey you'll see in Buckins these days. A lot of the people left here are retired, like Huey Wadden. For him, this is home. His friends are here, and his memories are here. Memories of a full stadium, a headlong dash down the wing by big number seven, a senior hockey team that wore the Buckins name with pride. For Here and Now, I'm Jonathan Crow. Hmm. Debbie, it was well before my time, but just talking to those guys, you get a real sense of uh, the pride and, and I guess the intensity of what the game meant to the community and meant to those players back then. Of course, the big game in town these days is the AHL. Did they have any thoughts on uh, how that's going? Well, it's the interesting quality? because these, a lot of these fellows maintain that, um, that many, of the, many of the guys they competed against, many of the guys they played with, could have played in the American Hockey League, possibly the NHL. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, this is well before expansion. It was the six-team era of the NHL, and uh, a lot of these guys uh, just never had the chance to play uh, you know, minor yeah. pro or, or in the major.